All right, what is up guys? Welcome back to episode five of the Reacting to Crash video series. I think this series has really caught on. A lot of people really enjoy it and I appreciate your support on this series. So if you enjoy it, drop a like down below, helps the video out just a little bit. If you're wondering where I'm at, I'm coming to you from a somewhat questionable hotel just outside of Phoenix. I'm on a trip right now that I'm gonna be making some videos on, which you guys will see after this video. So make sure you're subscribed to see some Arizona action. For our reacting to crash videos episode today, we have four different crashes, one of which is pretty graphic. I have to give you a little preemptive warning on that one. We're gonna save that one for last, so make sure you stick around to the end. As always with these crash series videos, not looking to make fun of anyone or put down anyone. It's all about looking at crashes or incidents that happened and learning something from them. Also helping newcomers understand what went wrong so that they can kind of make a better judgment on if the sport is right for them or not. So let's play the classic intro scene and we'll get right into it. Alrighty, alrighty, four crash videos lined up, ready to go. Before we get into those, I wanna give you guys a reminder. Right now, we're doing a giveaway for training with Aviator Paramotor. The guys I learned to fly with, they're located down in Lake Wales, Florida, but this training slot is actually for their brand new location in Denellen, Florida. The slot is for March 21st, and how you can enter to win this giveaway is by placing an order down below on tuckergot.com and filling out the second link in the description. That will get you an entry. Doesn't matter what order you do them in. Also see the third link for all the official contest rules. Right now we're rocking a couple new designs on the website. Right here we got the paraphrase t-shirt. Super awesome. If you look close, it's made up of words. And here we have the Alpine Sunset, available in two different fantastic colors. Like I said, any order placed on tuckergot.com until October 19th will get you an entry as long as you fill out that second link in the description as well. Huge opportunity, Aviator, they're the top notch training school out right now and they should hopefully guarantee that you're not gonna end up in one of these reacting to crash videos videos. Did that make sense? All right, let's get into it. Clip number one. This is a very relevant video because one of the last videos I posted dealt with a helicopter in a close call where a helicopter flew past us. Now, danger with helicopter is not just direct collision, but helicopters create a lot of rotor wash. And I always kind of wondered what would happen if a paramotor flew into rotor wash. Well, this video demonstrates it really well. So this video comes from Jap Acro channel on YouTube. And he's flying in Japan on a paraglider. He lays it out really well here. He's just flying along, sees a helicopter, makes a little bit of a course correction. He flies away from the helicopter. It was a relatively close encounter. I mean, he had the time to react. He flew away, helicopter goes away. Now, the interesting thing here is he turns back and eventually he's gonna cross paths with where the helicopter used to be. Now all that rotor wash is still churning, even though it's gotta be a solid 30 some seconds after uh, the helicopter passed by. And right here is about when you start to see things get ugly. He's flying, air's nice and stable, not a care in the world, and bam! Huge asymmetric collapse, and literally he just falls out of the sky. You could see he was pulling a ton of brake, but his glider just went in front of him and he was kind of beaten out of the sky by that sky blender. There's a reason I call them sky blenders. They just freaking churn up the air. He landed in bamboo, I think, and I'm pretty sure he was okay uninjured, but that just goes to show how scary rotor wash from helicopters can be. That was definitely a factor in our decision-making on that episode with the medevac helicopter. All right, next video is from a man, Roy Kygar. I don't know if I said that right, um, but he's out here flying on a trike. Now Roy takes off on his trike. He's flying around, having a fantastic time. And he finds this railroad track to just cruise over nice and low. This is something I would totally do if I was him in this situation. And as he's cruising along, he just catches the edge of that tree, top of another tree, wing surges, and into the third tree rolls. And uh, I think he was uninjured from this. From what I read, he stretched his lines on his glider, broke a little bit of gear, and his reaction here was pretty brilliant. 
Well, that was ugly. <laughs> Finally, I get a crash on video. Hey, Kevin, can you hear me? I, I have a little problem over here. I'm at your 10 o'clock on the ground. Just take a gander over here. Everything's okay, except for my pride. Really happy Roy made it out all right on this one. Um, I can relate to this situation. If you guys watch my Icarus race series, I did a similar thing. I was coming in for a landing and looking back, I just totally misjudged it. I knew I was gonna be close, but my wingtip caught the edge of a tree and luckily I was like into my flare when it happened, so I wasn't going that fast. Oh yeah, we're down but it made me fall sideways and broke my cage. It's much better to give yourself way more room than you need, uh, cause sometimes like all it takes is you catch a little line on a tree and it can tweak you enough to throw you into another tree. So yeah, obviously play it safe, stay a little bit farther away from trees and this stuff won't happen. All right, next video is from Richard Lowen. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but I tried. So Richard's out here with his buddy. They're setting up a trike to take off from, it seems like a kind of sketchy alley between some houses. And from what I gather from the video, it seems like the pilot in command here doesn't have a ton of experience. Um, I'm gonna link all the videos down below so you guys can watch them. His buddy's kind of giving him advice on you know, how to clip in, how to take off. It seems like he doesn't have much experience. It's gonna pull on you hard. The, before it gets up, it pulls you back. Okay. So be ready for that. Eventually he takes off, does a perfect job, and boom, he's out into open fields. Happy days. He's just cruising along. He's doing really good, you know? Not a care in the world. Until his throttle cable snaps. And when your throttle cable snaps, that brings you straight to idle, and then there's not much you can do after that, but come in for a landing. Dude man handles it, but I honestly think he could have done a much better job. In normal fixed wing aviation, there's a rule if you're climbing out and you're uh, below a certain altitude, depending on the aircraft type and everything, that if it happens, you do not turn, you just go straight into what's in front of you. And I think this would be a good example of that sort of theory. He was relatively low and decided to try to hook a 180 and he just didn't have the altitude to execute that turn after his engine failure. I think he probably could have pulled off a 90 degree turn and he obviously could have kept flying straight. This also brings up another good point about pre-flighting. You wouldn't really think, but I've actually seen quite a few throttle cables snap either the cable itself or part of the connectors that link it to the carburetor or the throttle itself. I've seen it happen a surprising amount of times. So that's always a good thing to pre-flight. And aside from that, in one case, my buddy Jeff actually had a throttle cable snap inside the tubing. So there was absolutely no way he could have known that that was gonna happen. So that goes to the point of always keeping in mind a landing option as you're flying, because for all you know, your throttle cable could just randomly snap inside the tube and boom, motor out. All right, final video. This is the gnarly one. This one comes from Rob Hummus. Hummus? Like, like the stuff you eat? So apparently this happened not too far away from me uh, at a beach in New Jersey. Rob pulls up his wing. He's reverse kiting like a champ. He's got his chase cam. He turns around and takes off. Beautiful day at the beach. He's up and immediately you can kind of tell Something's not right. The geometry just doesn't seem right. He goes to make a turn and you see him just start twisting under his wing. He gets total line twist and worst case scenario, goes into a spiral and just smacks that beach. This is honestly one of those clips that you look at and you're like, I don't know how he survived that impact. So let's roll back the clip and kind of look at some more details. You have to look really close, but you can notice the problem right from the very beginning. So right before he turns to launch, and even from the very beginning, you can tell that his risers are askew. The risers should be equal length um, as he's kiting his wing, but they're not. One is much lower than the other. 
He turns around and goes for his launch, and when you pause it with him facing forward, you can again see the left risers are all the way up by the hoop cage where they should be. The right risers are pulled almost halfway down, like very significantly. Now we see he proceeds to take off, and as soon as he gets in the air, you pause it again, and now is where he realizes there's trouble. His body is like he's flying sideways because that right side's pulled down so hard. You can see he's got his left hand buried trying to make a correction. He continues to fly, and I think a big mistake is he tries to make a turn to the left. His glider has, I guess, significant right weight shift in, and he's trying to get it to turn left. It's really doing the exact opposite of what the glider wants to do. And that's when the torque of his engine, I think, takes over, spins him around, gives him that line twist, situation you never want. And I believe at that point, the right weight shift takes over, and that's what turns him into that spiral and unfortunately smacks the beach way hard. So I reached out to Rob, he actually sent me this video and told me feel free to use it, feel free to analyze it, and I appreciate him sharing this whole situation with the community to try to help people out. So from the video, it was obvious that one riser was pulled down way more than the other, but I didn't really know exactly what was wrong, but Rob told me what he found was the riser itself was looped under his swing arm, which is crazy. I've never seen that before. He said he's never seen that before. Um, but an interesting thing he said was it had happened to him two times prior. This was the third instance that that riser got wrapped around his weight shift arm. That kind of adds to the situation because at some point he was kind of complacent. It had happened two times before, he got away with it. Uh, he said he only realized after he got off the ground that his riser was caught again. He thought he could kind of go with it and uh, make a safe landing obviously, but he kind of pushed past the boundary of what his equipment was allowing. Now there's a lot of different things that can happen on launch. I've had lines get bunched together, lines get tangled. Sometimes you don't realize until you leave the ground. Best case scenario, you feel it, you see it or something before you get off the ground and you just abort. Obviously that doesn't always play out like that and sometimes you leave the ground and oh shoot, something's tangled or wrapped around an arm. Now you have to do your best to milk that and be very gentle and figure out how it's affecting your flight characteristics to get yourself back down safely. Obviously he's flying at the beach and he's launching at the beach, so at some point in time he's gotta make a turn and come back. If you're in an open field, best case is just keep flying straight and put her down. Obviously he didn't have that luxury, so he had to make a turn. I think in this case, I don't know, I wasn't in the seat, but I would imagine going right might have been better. Another thing is, as he started to twist, I imagine the torque of his engine is what twisted him around. At that point, when you start to feel yourself torque twist, it's probably not a natural reaction in the moment, but what you gotta do is let off power, and that will reduce the torque and let yourself untwist. Now you're compromising your altitude and you're gonna start coming down, but that's better than twisting up. A lot of good lessons to be learned from this one, and I applaud Rob for sharing it with the community, and I hope he gets well. I know he had a decent amount of injuries from this incident. So that's all four videos I've got for this episode of reacting to crash videos. My camera's giving me a notification that it's gonna overheat because I'm filming in epic crispy 4K. Make sure you drop a like if you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you're subscribed so you stick around to see some Arizona action coming in the near future. And don't forget to get an order and that second link filled out before the 19th of October so that you can enter to win the Aviator training. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm gonna cut it up right now and get it online and I will see you guys in the next episode. Till then, peace.